Hello, and thank you for watching this June 29th weather update, brought to you by Agribull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agribull. Well before the start of this growing season in March, we at Agribull have had a consistent message about rainfall this spring and early summer. That message was for continued drought out west and abundant rain through the Great Plains and Midwest. Over the last three weeks, abundance in rain has transitioned from beneficial to destructive. Shown here is the last seven days of precipitation as expressed in percent of normal. Tropical Storm Bill was the major highlight of the previous week, but the past five days have been characterized by an active storm track across the heart of the Corn Belt. Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois, and Indiana have standing water in many fields, while not a drop can be found out west. Thankfully, a big chunk of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas was dry, allowing for the harvest of winter wheat in these areas. However, these pictures tell the story across Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, and Indiana. While the majority of farmland in these regions is draining, known low and wet spots are in many cases looking at a total loss of the crop as some locations have been submerged for over a week. Beans will be the hardest hit in these states, as most corn in this area is far enough along that the roots are established and the plant can tolerate standing water better than a younger bean crop. Furthermore, this rain has now pushed farmers in Indiana and Missouri, who have not yet planted due to rain, to a decision point on attempting to grow crops this year in the millions of unplanted acres in those states. The success of rain has also risen concern about nutrient loss through runoff and the risk for mold. At this time, I would follow the advice of Dr. Dave Pike from our Agribull team who recommends scouting for corn foliar diseases at this time, as there have been reports of a noted increase in foliar diseases on corn and on root diseases on soybean as a response to the wet and humid weather. Markets have certainly reacted to the excessive rain we have forecast across the heart of the Corn Belt for the last few weeks, with corn prices back above $4 for the first time since the beginning of April. These prices will have to be watched closely, though, as global supplies of corn are still very high. I expect a lot of volatility over the coming weeks. In addition to this, November beans have moved nearly a dollar, while wheat futures are up over 80 cents as well. One crop we don't often get to mention directly is cotton, but the weather this year has certainly played a major role in the 2015 crop. It has been reported that Arkansas has planted the fewest acres in recent history. This is in part due to low prices due to high global production, but heavy rains have kept farmers out of their fields too. Additionally, the USDA has reported that just 55% of the U.S. crop is in good to excellent condition. Be watching these prices as the season wears on. With some of the corn crop approaching its reproductive stages, we are on the lookout for excessive heat over the coming weeks. We can see in this animation that in the middle of the country, only Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas will break into the 90s this week. In contrast, the southwest United States will bake in over 100 plus degree heat as the week goes on. Looking into next week, here's the probability of being warmer than or cooler than average. We can see a large section of the Great Plains and Midwest having a cool start to July, which is highly correlated with high yields. If the water stress was not an issue, 2015 may have rivaled 2014 in terms of yield and total production across the United States. Here's an animation of precipitation from the NAM model created by TropicalTidbits.com. Rain moves across Indiana and Ohio on Monday, while another system takes shape and moves into northern Illinois by Tuesday morning. This system pulls through northern Indiana and Ohio just in time for another system to develop and spread rain through Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. The start of this week clearly has no relief for the already saturated soils in these regions. The seven-day precipitation forecast shows the influence of the midweek system on Missouri, southern Illinois, Kentucky, and Tennessee. While there are many meteorological factors contributing to this rain, one of the largest has been the strengthening El Nino in the Pacific Ocean. Statistically, this event is sharing a lot of similarities to the 1997-98 powerful El Nino, and we need to be looking long-term, as this year's El Nino will likely continue to play a large role in precipitation and temperature patterns from now through this winter. To finish, here are the three-month outlooks for precipitation and temperature from July through September. Long-range forecast models have consistently predicted these patterns of excessive rain and cooler to near-normal temperatures across much of the Corn Belt.
We will be watching these forecast models closely as we enter the second half of the 2015 growing season. As always, we at Agrible will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.